In this sequence, to get from the first term to the second term, we add 4. To get from the second term to the third term, we also add 4. And it's the same again from the third to the fourth. Whenever we add the same number to get from one term to the next term, we call it a linear sequence. Another word that's sometimes used instead of the word linear is arithmetic, but they essentially mean the same thing. This next sequence here is also linear or arithmetic. To get from the first term to the second, we subtract 2. It's the same from the second to the third, and the third to the fourth. So whenever a sequence follows a rule, where to get the next term you have to always add the same number or subtract the same number, we call it a linear or arithmetic sequence. In the previous video, we learned how to generate a sequence from an nth term. For example, if we had 3n plus 4 and we generated the sequence, it would be 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. In this video, we're going to start with the sequence and see if we can work backwards to work out what the nth term was. When we generated the sequence 4n, we noticed it was the multiples of 4, or the 4 times table. When we did 5n, it was the multiples of 5, or the 5 times table. And this works for any number, so 10n would be the multiples of 10, or the 10 times table. Let's take the sequence 4n and use it to generate some other sequences. So if we were to do the sequence 4n plus 1, we would first of all generate 4n, and then add 1. So to get this sequence, we can just add 1 to all of the numbers in the 4n sequence. So to get the first term, we add 1 to this 4 here, which is 5. To get the second term, we add 1 to 8, which is 9. And to continue the sequence, we just keep adding 1 to all of the terms, and we'd end up with these numbers here. We can also do this by subtracting a number. So if we wanted to generate the sequence with nth term 4n subtract 1, we would subtract 1 from all of the numbers in the 4n sequence. So to get the first term, we would subtract 1 from 4, which is 3. To get the second term, we subtract 1 from 8, which is 7. And to generate more terms, we just keep subtracting 1 from the 4n sequence. This works if we add or subtract any number to 4n. For example, 4n plus 6, we would just add 6 to all of the numbers in the 4n sequence, to get this sequence here. You could think of this as being 6 more than the numbers in the 4 times table. Or if we did 4n subtract 3, you could think of this as being 3 less than all of the numbers in the 4n sequence. So we'd end up with this one here. Each of these sequences here has something in common. In the 4n sequence, to get from one term to the next, you add 4. But you also add 4 in this sequence here. And this one here as well. And notice each of the sequences has 4 in front of the n. So if the sequence always goes up by 4, we know its nth term will have a 4n in it. The only difference between the sequences is where they start. The 4n sequence begins at 4, because it's the 4 times table. 4n minus 3 began at 1, however, because we needed to subtract 3 from 4. 4n plus 6 starts at 10, because we needed to add 6 to the 4. We can use this idea to work out the nth term of any linear sequence. Let's try this one here. The first thing to do is look at the difference between the terms, and this one is always add 4, which means its nth term must involve 4n. But 4n would be the multiples of 4 or the 4 times table, and our sequence doesn't start at 4. So what I like to do is write the 4 times table above the sequence, so 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and so on. We then need to work out what we need to do to the 4n sequence to get to our sequence. So how do we get from 4 to 11? Well, that would be add 7. We can check this with the second term as well. 8 plus 7 does give you 15. And in fact, this will work with any of the terms. You'll need to add 7 to get from 4n to our sequence. So the nth term must be 4n plus 7. Let's try another example. So we'll do this one here. The first thing to do is work out the difference between the terms. And this time we're adding 3, which means it must be a 3n sequence. 3n is the 3 times table. So we'll write that above the sequence. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Then we want to work out how we get from 3n to our sequence. So how do we get from 3 to 5? Well, that's plus 2. And 6 to 8, that's also plus 2. And it is as well for 9 to 11, 12 to 14, and 15 to 17. So the nth term is 3n plus 2. Let's try another one. So for this sequence here, we'll start by working out the difference between the terms. This one is add 10, so it must be a 10n sequence. 
Because it's 10n, we write the 10 times table above the sequence. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then we see how we get from the 10n sequence to our sequence. So how do we get from 10 to 7? Well, this time it's subtract, subtract 3. And this does work for all of the other terms of the sequence. So the nth term must be 10n, subtract 3. Here are two more sequences that you might try to find the nth term of. If you wish, pause the video and give them a try yourself, and then press play and I'll show you the answers. So for this first sequence, the difference is always adding 5, which means it's a 5n sequence. So we write the 5 times table above, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then we're going to work out how to get from this to our sequence. To get from 5 to 7, we add 2. This works from 10 to 12, and for all of the terms of the sequence. So this one's 5n plus 2. For the next question, to get from one term to the next, we're always adding 7. So this is based on 7n. So we write the 7 times table above the sequence, and then we're going to work out how to get from this to our sequence. Well, to get from 7 to 1, we subtract 6. This works from 14 to 8, and for all of the other terms as well. So this must be 7n, subtract 6. Earlier in the video, we said that you can have linear sequences where to get from one term to the next, you subtract a number. For example, this one here. To get from one term to the next term in this one, we subtract 2. Now, when we come to do the nth term of this one, rather than having a 2n, it will have a negative 2n because we're subtracting 2. This will also mean instead of writing the 2 times table above the sequence, we need to write the negative 2 times table. This is just the same as the 2 times table, but we put a negative in front of each of the numbers. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10. And then to finish, we still do the same step as before. We need to work out how to get from the negative 2 times table to our sequence. So how do we get from negative 2 to positive 10? Well, sometimes people find this a bit tricky and make a mistake. I think it's easy to understand if you think of a number line. Let's mark on negative 2 and positive 10. To get from negative 2 to positive 10, we're first of all going to go from negative 2 to 0. To get from negative 2 to 0, you just add 2. And then to get from 0 to 10, you add 10. So if I want to go all the way from negative 2 up to positive 10 in one go, I would need to add 12. So to get from negative 2 to 10, I add 12. And this does work for all of the other terms in the sequence. So the nth term will be negative 2n plus 12. Let's try another example like this one. So we'll have this sequence here. To get from one term to the next term, we subtract 5, which means the nth term will include negative 5n. Then we write the negative 5 times table, so negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, negative 25. And we want to work out how to get from these numbers to our sequence. To get from negative 5 to 38, let's think of a number line, and we'll mark on both of those numbers. To get from negative 5 to 0, we add 5, and to get from 0 to 38, we add 38. So to get there in one jump, we can add the 5 and the 38, which is 43. So to get from negative 5 to 38, we add 43. And this works for all of the other numbers as well. So it's negative 5n plus 43. Here's another two sequences that you might want to try. Pause the video and give them a go, and then press play and I'll show you what the answers were. So for the first question, to get from one term to the next, we're always subtracting 3. So it's negative 3n. So we write out the negative 3 times table, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, negative 15. To get from here to our sequence, we're always adding 16. So it's negative 3n plus 16. And for the next question, to get from one term to the next, we're always subtracting 4. So we need to do negative 4n. Then we write the negative 4 times table, and we work out how to get from here to our sequence. In all of the cases here, you're just subtracting 1. So it's negative 4n, subtract 1. If we know the nth term of a sequence, it can help us solve some other problems. Let's have a look at some of these now. In this question, the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence are 7, 15, 23, 31, and 39. The question says to work out the hundredth term of the sequence. Now, one way to do this question would just be to continue the sequence until we get to the hundredth term, but that will take a really long time. A smart way is to work out the nth term first. For this sequence to get from one term to the next, we add 8, which means its nth term must include a10. If we write out the 8 times table above the sequence, and work out how to get from here to our sequence. 
In all cases here, we're subtracting 1. So its nth term must be a10 subtract 1. So now we have the nth term of the sequence, and we've been asked to find the hundredth term. We can do this by substituting in 100 for the n in the nth term. So instead of 8 times n, it's 8 times 100, and then subtract 1. Well, 8 times 100 is 800, so it's 800 subtract 1, which is 799. So the answer is just 799. And that's a lot quicker than writing out all 100 terms of the sequence. Let's have a look at another example. So in this one, the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence are as follows. And we've been asked if the number 215 is in the sequence or not. For this sequence to get from one term to the next, you add three. So we need a 3n in the nth term. We write out the three times table above the sequence. And to get from here to our sequence, we would add five. So the nth term for this one is 3n plus five. Now that we have the nth term, we're ready to answer the question about if 215 is in the sequence or not. To do this, we're going to form an equation. We take the nth term, 3n plus five, and we say, could it be equal to 215? And if it was, what value would n be? We can work out the value of n by solving this equation. So the first thing to do is subtract five from both sides. On the left, this would cancel the five, so you just have 3n. And on the right, 215 subtract five is 210. Then because it's 3n, we would divide both sides by three. On the left, this will give you 1n, and on the right, 210 divided by three is 70. This means that if n was 70, the nth term would give us the answer 215, which means 215 must be in the sequence. In fact, it's the 70th term. So we can answer this question by saying, yes, it is the 70th term. And we'll try one more example. So this time we have an arithmetic sequence again, and we're going to work out if the number 116 is in this sequence. We'll begin by finding the nth term again. So for this one, it goes up in fours. So we need four n, and we write the four times table above the sequence. And to get from the four times table to our sequence, we're going to subtract two. So its nth term is four n subtract two. So remember, we're trying to see if 116 is in the sequence. So just like before, we take our nth term, 4n minus 2, and we set it equal to 116. And we're going to try and find the value of n. To solve this equation, we add 2 to both sides. On the left-hand side, the 2s will cancel, so we just have 4n. And on the right-hand side, 116 plus 2 is 118. Then we divide both sides by 4. On the left-hand side, 4n divided by 4 is 1n. And on the right-hand side, 118 divided by 4 is 29.5. So this would mean that if 116 was in the sequence, it would be the 29.5th term. But 29.5th doesn't make any sense in terms of terms. We could have a 29th term, we could have a 30th term, but you can't have a 29.5th term. What this means is that 116 is not in the sequence, because we haven't ended up with a whole number or integer for n. So we would say, no, it is not in the sequence. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.